Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to revisit an old topic with some updates for Definitive Edition and look at the best, and this time also the worst, hero units in Age of Empires 2. Of course, with every new DLC comes new campaigns and named characters. To the point, believe it or not, there are now over 160 heroes in the game. We're going to get to the 10 best, though I thought it'd be fun to start off with the 5 worst, in no particular order. I'm going to be ignoring the Kings and Monks, Joan the Maid, Emperor in a Barrel, etc, as these are units clearly not intended for combat and would make for a trivial list, so these have to be actually meant as combat units to include. With that, we'll start off the worst heroes list with the Archers of the Eyes. They appear a few times in the campaigns, twice in Saladin, once in Barbarossa, and two or three times in the expansion campaigns. With 55 HP, 7 attack, and no armor, they're a slightly better version of an Arbalester, with the added benefit of slowly self-healing. They do have 100% base accuracy though, and Arbalesters don't, which is in reference to the historical Archers of the Eyes, who were Nubian archers allegedly so accurate they could shoot enemies in the eyes from a great distance. That also gave them the alternate name, the Pupil Smiters, so at least they have a nice nod to that historical inspiration in their perfect accuracy. Next is the Sheriff of Nottingham. Interestingly, Robin Hood and Little John are also heroes, making me wonder if there was an intention for a Robin Hood campaign at one point early on. Despite being in the game since Age of Kings, the Sheriff has never made a campaign appearance as himself, though he's had several appearances under different names. For example, in the Longshanks campaign, he's Gilbert de Clare, who breaks Edward out of prison. His stats are arguably worse than a champion, with 90 HP, 9 attack, and 0 armor. In terms of who I'd personally want to be broken out of a dungeon by, it's probably not this guy and a couple of men-at-arms, but beggars can't be choosers. Third on our list is the Hunting Wolf, which makes 14 separate appearances in the campaigns. It's a significantly worse version of Ornlu the Wolf, but is technically classified as a hero. What makes them bad isn't just the 100 HP and 8 attack, which admittedly isn't great, but simply that they take all bonus damage in the game. Spear and Siege units in particular benefit from that, but many, many units have some sort of bonus damage, making Hunting Wolves a lot weaker than they seem. Next up, fourth on our list is Aethelfrith, the lone World Raider hero unit. He's made one official campaign appearance in Vinland Saga, where he lives on a small island and is simply named Bert. He has 140 HP, 8 attack, and no armor, meaning he would struggle against even a Castle Age Knight. The real Aethelfrith was an Anglo-Saxon, so what he's doing vacationing in North America here is a little suspicious. And finally, rounding out the 5 worst is Minamoto. He makes one appearance in the Kukikara standalone Japanese scenario, and with 200 HP and 8 attack, he would be a decent infantry unit in other situations, but as a hero, he's not too impressive. In fairness, he shows up with 30 mounted samurais though, which have way more attack and armor, so his arrival is a bit of a turning point in that scenario, even if his personal stats aren't that great. So those are the weakest heroes, but now let's get to the best. I made a rudimentary formula to roughly score them that at least somewhat informs the entries on the list and at least help to highlight units that stand out above the others, though things like having a ranged attack and extra speed were also considered as well. Starting with number 10, we have Dogna Jean. This unit appears in the Ethiopian campaign, with the main standout feature here being the 930 base HP. That's the most HP of any land or water unit in the game. The obvious reason why he has so much HP is he's the final boss of a particular mission, and they really want you to have to work for it. At the same time though, he's an elephant archer, so he takes a lot of bonus damage from many different sources and has relatively low attack, so with the right counter units he can be beaten without too much trouble. Next up at number 9 is Tsar Constantine. Again, defeating him is the goal of the mission, this time in the Bulgarian campaign. While his base stats aren't exactly amazing, Constantine is incredibly rare for dealing 100% trample damage to all adjacent units, so it's like he's directly attacking every unit around him at once. The real Tsar he's based on was actually paralyzed from the waist down in a riding accident, and did indeed switch to riding a chariot, taking it into his final losing battle against Ivilo and his peasant uprising. Constantine is in fact the only Age of Empires 2 hero unit to ride a chariot, as there is no Wrath hero unit at this point. Next up at number 8, we have El Cid Campeador, that is the version after he gets his horse Babieca. His 430 HP gives him the highest HP of the fast cavalry units in the game, so excluding elephants. In contrast, most cavalry heroes have between 200 or 240 HP, like Henry V, 
up to 350 HP for Attila, so El Cid's is definitely a bit of an outlier. Especially considering you lose if El Cid dies in any of his missions, that's a nice feature, and he actually backs up his HP and armor with some solid attack as well. He's actually a very useful unit in the first five missions of the El Cid campaign, and is able to more than hold his own against regular units, or even take a bit of castle fire in a pinch thanks to his high armor and HP. Moving on to number 7, we have William Wallace. He's one of four pretty similarly powerful looking infantry units, including Le Trienne. They all have mid 300 to 400 HP and 20 something attack, so they all have a case to be top 10, but I only wanted one melee infantry hero on the list as they're a bit slow and less versatile because of that. Of this very strong list, to me William Wallace stands out slightly because of his high armor, which makes him a lot better against weak units especially, though Le Trienne also has a very compelling argument as a top hero unit. William Wallace actually appears twice in the campaigns. Once as the hero in his self-titled campaign where he sends reinforcements and gives you his aid as a playable unit, but also as the antagonist in the final Edward Longshanks campaign mission Hammer of the Scots, where his good stats are used against you. Also appearing in that same campaign mission is the next entry on our list, the Warwolf Trebuchet. Named after what's very likely the largest trebuchet ever constructed, this is not just any old Britain trebuchet with a unique tech Warwolf. There is a bit of competition among a few trebuchet hero units, but this is by far the better version of Bad Neighbor and God's Own Sling. While all three have 20 range and 300 HP, the Warwolf trebuchet has even more attack, pierce armor, and a greater bonus against buildings, especially when compared to the regular trebuchet. On top of that, it also has a 40% larger splash zone than a regular Britain Warwolf trebuchet. It's hard to accurately rank siege units on this sort of list as they just look so good in terms of stats but die without protection. Still, having even a few of these would make quick work of either buildings or bunched up units. Next up at number 5 we have Admiral Yi as the lone water unit on the list. Admiral Yi is most famous for defeating 300 Japanese ships with 13 Korean ships and consistently made a habit of winning when both outnumbered and undersupplied. He appears in the Korean Noryang Point scenario, and compared to a regular turtle ship, you can see he of course has more attack and HP, but maybe most handy is his 10 range. Again, it's hard to compare his stats to land units directly, but I consider it pretty clearly the strongest naval unit in the game, even after the addition of a few hero ships in the last cons expansion, including the Middlebrook, Life Ericsson, and Vasco da Gama. Moving on to number 4, we have, and I'm sure I'm saying this wrong, Ulrich von Jungingen. He was a Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights, and appears in the Polish and Bohemian campaigns as an antagonist. That's why the first thing you'll notice is he has great armor, comparable to Alexander Niewski in that respect, who was already a great hero unit, but in other ways is even better, with much higher attack and HP, plus some cool horns to cap things off. He's truly what you'd get if you put a Teutonic Knight on a horse and gave it pierce armor, making him arguably the most well-rounded of the melee heroes in the game. That said, I do think he's slightly outclassed in raw stats by the next entry, the Abraha Elephant. While this unit doesn't make a campaign appearance, you can see compared to a regular Elite War Elephant, it's a clear cut above. In addition to its just amazing stats for a single unit, it also does full damage to adjacent units, like Tsar Constantine. In terms of raw damage output and HP, it's probably the tankiest combined land unit in the game by a significant margin, though I think two other units practically have a slight advantage in their versatility. So what units could possibly outdo this one? Well, at number 2, we have Harold Hardrada. Superficially, he's very similar to Charles Martel, as both are fast firing ranged infantry, but where Charles Martel has more range, Hardrada moves about 50% faster. The fact that you're combining range with an incredibly fast 1 attack per second means it has slightly higher damage output than the Abraha Elephant. Harold Hardrada appears in the Hastings mission as a possible ally in an alt history side quest, but most of the time you see him is in online scenarios, where he's typically the highest level of melee unit. The combination of fast movement, fast attack, and just pure damage output is I think the main reason for that. Now before we get to what I think is the obvious number 1, we have a couple of honorable mentions. The first is Nobunaga. He's scripted to die in the opening moments of the Kyoto mission, kicking off your revenge arc, which is really too bad as he's an insane unit. He in fact has the fastest attack of any infantry, cavalry, or archer, attacking twice every second. 
His HP and attack stat are relatively modest, but even with just 8 attack, he's technically dealing damage faster than Harold Hardrada, and every other non-siege land unit except for one, Krolf the Ganger. Krolf has a beastly 20 attack and a reload time of 1, along with some very good armor as well. Last time I even put him on my top 10 list, though the problem is he's really slow, like elephant unit slow. He also has just 140 HP, so archers are a pretty big thorn in his side, though in melee he's basically unstoppable. But now, the number one hero unit, there's really no doubt, it's Genghis Khan. He hits hard with 25 attack, has a bonus against siege, moves fast, has zero frame delay for easy micro, and even resists a bit of anti-archer and anti-cavalry bonus damage. Objectively, he's not the tankiest per se, but for his versatility, in pretty much any hero-based scenario, the ultimate upgrade is Genghis Khan, and always has been. To me, he's a clear step above similar cavalry archer hero units, despite a lot of competition, including some recent additions. That's just my list though, and you tell me if you think I missed one. You challenge my every decision. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.